So how does a real F1 car compare to an F1 car in a sim? Well in this video I'm going to try and beat my own outright real world lap record in Assetto Corsa. I'm also going to compare the two pieces of footage side by side so you can see just how close the sim is to the real world. Now I set this lap record all the way back in 2004 in a 1997 Benetton F1 car that I used to drive. The lap record was a 38.032 on the Brands Hatch Indy circuit and Porsche actually went there with the incredible 919 to try and beat the lap record and unfortunately for them at least they missed it by just two tenths of a second. So I drove this Benetton for the whole of the 2004 season in a championship called uh, Boss GP which is for ex Formula 1 cars that are up to maybe five years old. Um, and what a fantastic car. It was 720 brake horsepower, lots of grip, and we went around circuits in the UK and Europe. And at the time, I was only 18 years old, which was a pretty young age for, uh, for a driver back then to be driving a Formula One car. Um, you know, obviously now it's pretty commonplace for younger drivers to be in, in an F1 seat at that age. But, uh, but yeah, I was a young driver driver back then and these stuff these cars are, are difficult to drive I've, I've been lucky enough to drive from a 1982 f1 car all the way up to 2013 i think is the most recent car that i've driven and uh, for me the sweet spot is with these um these mid to late 90s f1 cars because they've got the speed they've got the grip but they are difficult things to drive they um they don't like the bumps, they don't like the curbs, you feel pretty exposed in the cars, your kind of head is, is up and up and out there, um, a bit different to they are now, to what they are now. And so they feel a lot more raw, they feel a lot more, frankly, um, scary when you initially get in them before you've got, got used to them. So in terms of the comparison, I have to say that this model, which is in Assetto Corsa, one that I've um, I downloaded, it was a mod was pretty good, um, straight out of the box actually. Um, it felt pretty similar, obviously you don't have the G-Force, the brake pressure because of the setup that I've got with the Fanatec stuff here isn't as heavy as it would be in a car like this, you really have to stamp on the brakes. But the, the dynamics of the car, the way that it was working and the way that it was feeling was, was, was pretty similar. Um, I will say that this model was pretty light on the rear, so when I w went to turn it in, the rear of the car was uh, was was lighter than I would have expected. But um, aside from that, and I did try and change it with setup, but aside from that, it was it was pretty good. So you can see here, I'm uh, I'm on. I did, did 13 laps before this session. That was that's all I had done, just to try and get a feeling for the car, try and find out how much grip it's got, see what it's like in those quicker corners, which is where it was struggling at the rear. Um, it didn't have the aero at the back of the car um, and to be honest I put I put the wings up and, and everything like that but it still didn't have quite enough grip so I've just done a 38.4 just four tenths of a second off my lap record now the lap record was done in a race for it to be an official lap record in the real world you have to do these lap records in the race so that means that the car was full of fuel um, and obviously you've got a bit more of a, a race pace set up in the car. In the sim, I did drop all the fuel out of it and just made it good for, for one lap. But you can see here that I'm, I'm building my pace. Um, if you watch the throttle, you can see how smooth I had to get in. And that last lap was a 32, 38.2, much closer. So I was really struggling in the quicker corner. So just coming through paddock here and then going into Surtees, the quick left-hander at the end of the lap. I was struggling through those areas with the rear of the car, so I was having to make sure that when I lifted off the accelerator, it was super smooth so that we don't get the weight transfer to the front. So just watch the throttle trace here. You can see how smooth I am off the throttle and then back on again, nice and smooth again. Bring the car into clear ways and here you're just having to be really patient to get back on the throttle, get a good launch. See, I had a bit of a wobble there coming through. Into paddock, what was that lap time? A 32. 38 dead, sorry, so I have just beaten my record by a couple of hundredths. I'm going to do one more lap to uh, to compare. 
see if I can go a little bit quicker. I think there's a bit more in the car here. Focusing on just getting the thing, uh, the traction nice and smooth. Just watch that throttle trace. You can see how smooth I'm having to get on the accelerator and how I lift going into Cersei's here. Really, really smooth. So the weight doesn't go to the front of the car as much and we give the rear the grip when we need it at turning. So coming along the start finish straight here. And there we have it, a 37.8. So it took me 20 laps to beat the lap record. I have to say that I think the uh, the model in the Seto here is probably a little bit quicker than the car that, that I drove in real in the real world. Why don't we compare this side by side with my own onboard footage and see what it was actually like. So here we have the two laps side by side. Heading down the start finish straight now, into paddock. They've been matched perfectly, so you can see where one gains and the other one doesn't. I mean, pretty similar through paddock. The real world's a little bit ahead of the sim here. Now this about even again, coming down into Graham Hill. Now the sim's a little bit ahead, I think. Yeah, just a fraction, but it's all very, very close. Into 30s. It's very, very similar. Into clearways, pretty much the same and away we go down the start finish line. What's incredible here is exactly how close these two laps are together, which is just fantastic. If you want to learn about how to be a better sim racer, check out this short playlist that I've put together for you to build your driving technique when on the simulator.